Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Maui Linux. I'm starting at the website here purely because I wanted to laugh at the title there, Your Personal Isle of Freedom. Hmm. If you're not sure what the name Maui means, it is one of the Hawaiian islands. Maui is a continuation of Netrunner, and happy to say they have kept some of the beautiful theming of Netrunner. It always was a pretty operating system. As you can see here, I'm reviewing version 17.03, which is codenamed Kubra Libra. Maui is based on KDE Neon, which itself is based on Ubuntu 16.04 long-term support release. So it comes with the KDE Plasma 5.9 desktop at the moment, and specifically a version 5.9.3. As you can see, we have an alternative to the KDE theming, so it's a little bit different than your standard stock KDE Plasma desktop. I find that a lot of distros that use the KDE Plasma desktop tend to leave the stock theming. Your exceptions are OpenSUSE and Manjaro. I haven't changed any of the settings, they've opted to use the application dashboard for the menu. Yeah, nice theming. In terms of stability, it has been exactly like KD Neon and runs perfectly. That is on my system though, I know it does not run perfectly for everyone. You can see from while I'm glancing around the menus here, there are quite a few applications pre-installed on the system. This is a complete contrast to KD Neon, which comes with next to nothing pre-installed. It is very pretty, well presented. I think this is uh, the point where my positive opinion about the operating system kind of ends. But now we have to look at what is pre-installed on the system, and I have to say I'm seeing quite a few poor choices of applications. For instance, the update manager used here is the Mint updater. Why? For starters, it's going to disable updates which are classes are risky, specifically updates to Grub and Linux kernel. There have been a few Linux kernel exploits around recently, which won't be patched. Uh, secondly, why choose a non-KDE update manager? There's a perfectly good KDE update manager called Discover. Incidentally, Discover Software Center is not on the system. One of the decent applications to include. Otherwise you're saying, well, don't really want people looking for applications, do you? I mean, what does it use? It doesn't use Moon. No, I believe it actually used Synaptic. Come on. Of all the choices here, you have to use a non-cute application. Can't say with a constricted for space, it's quite a large ISO file this was. It was 1.9 gigabytes large for the ISO file. Another example of an odd application to choose. For the music player, we've got Audacious and G Music Browser. Why not use one of the two good, cute music players like Amarok or Clementine? Okay, let's look at something that's not an application. So, uh, system settings. Why did I type that in when it was in the favourite? I would say it's been a long day, but um, it hasn't been. There's a few things over and above that we would see normally on a Plasma distro. For example, Plasma services. Baloo. Why is Baloo off? Now, if you don't know what Baloo is, it's a file searcher. So what it would enable you to do is open up the application menu like this and be able to search for files that are on the system. You can't do that. The only reason you would want to turn it off maybe is if you're constrained for resources on your system. If you've got maybe an underpowered netbook, let's say, and, and running Baloo would be too much of an overhead. Anyway, let's move away from the downside for a moment and have a look at some other things on here. So here's another item I've not normally seen before. It's a system D configuration. I suppose it's nothing much really, just a uh, nice to see. I believe that all the other settings here are what you would expect to see under the likes of KD Neon or Kubuntu. If I have missed anything though, please let me know. Looking at the workspace appearance, there are a few additional themes pre-installed on here. There you are, you can see the Netrunner routes. We have a couple of Netrunner themes. Yeah. The style is very similar to Breeze, but it is not Breeze. The colours are, yeah, as I say, slightly different. Yeah, the colour scheme they've gone for here is Carbon. But then under GTK, they've gone for the Breeze theme. So there will be a subtle difference between the GTK and Qt applications. Window decorations. You know what, that close, minimise, maximise style there, 
doesn't look too bad. I suppose it's very reminiscent of the flat Windows 8 style. Perhaps that's not necessarily your favorite, so you can easily change it because there are quite a few styles included on the system. So you do have some flexibility here. Opening up the application, you can see a little progress of it opening. It does that instead of having a bouncy mouse cursor. We have uBlock Origin pre-installed on Firefox. Hmm. And also a YouTube video downloader. I don't like that really. I mean, people should be free to choose the add-ons they want for their browser. On the shortcuts here we have links to the Marry Home, Forums and KD Store. There's no welcome screen on the system. You don't have to have that, it just makes it a bit nicer for new users. Have a look at how memory usage is doing. Well, that's not really a fair test because I've been running a few applications, but anyway, it's reached about 600 meg out of 8 gig of RAM. It's not too bad. That's, that's a fairly standard figure for Plasma 5. And finally, I'll do more of a thorough review of the applications. So There's quite a few games pre-installed on the system. Most of them are lightweight, small, KDE, cute games. And you also have Steam. Graphics, GIMP, Inkscape and Krita. Internet, the browser of choice is Firefox, and you also have an email client of Thunderbird. Multimedia, I've remarked on the music player already. You have VLC for the media player. A Voco screen, screen recorder. Office, we have the full suite of LibreOffice. Settings, we've got a system settings and a Grub customizer. I think I have a very old video of Grub customizer, but I had a quick look through it and it appears my old video from a few years ago is still relevant. Under system, there's a couple of extras here. We've got Yakwake, Quake style terminal, VirtualBox, VirtualBox in VirtualBox, yeah. and Asus Studio Image Writer. And that's about all. You can see the icons under power are the standard Plasma icons. And that was a look at Maui Linux. So in conclusion, I like the theming. Some of the additional KD applications and system settings were interesting to see. I just don't really think their choice of all the applications was particularly good. Is it better than KD Neon? Well, it's certainly a lot easier to get up and running compared to KD Neon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.